In this video, I'm going to do another example of ninja physics. I'm going to try and estimate whether we can use pumped hydro to allow Canberra to work off purely renewable electricity. Now, at the moment, Canberra does work off purely renewable electricity, but all renewable forms of electricity rely on the sun shining or the wind blowing. And the question is always, what do you do when the sun doesn't shine, like night time, or the wind doesn't blow? In our case, we can draw on the old-fashioned coal power stations of New South Wales or hydroelectric power from Snowies in those times. But if you wanted to do it purely within Canberra, we need some sort of storage. We can store the power from when it's, the sun is shining and the wind is blowing to when it isn't. And one possibility is pumped hydro. Now, in the mountains near Canberra, we have some dams. So high up in the mountains, we have Corin Dam. And much further down the mountains, we have Cotter Dam. And the idea is that we pump the water down pipes between them. And when we've got lots of power, because it's sunny and windy, we pump water up the top. And then when it's dark and night and calm, we let the water back down through turbines and get the power back. And these can be very efficient. They can work at 60, 70, 80 percent efficiency, these uh, pumped hydro schemes. So basically they can store all the energy. They're storing it in the form of potential energy, with the potential energy of the water that's up high. There's a height difference of about 500 metres from the top to the bottom. So, is this actually feasible that we could use these dams, so stop using them to supply water, we'd have to get our water supply from somewhere else, but instead use them for electricity, or build some more dams in the same sort of location to do this. Now to do this we're going to work out how much energy in the, again, the dams, and compare that to energy use Now what I'm going to do is assume we're trying to use solar power and we need enough storage to keep things going overnight. So the idea would be during the day we accumulate power, pump water up to the top and then run it down to get the power during the night. I'm not going to try and survive for weeks on a windy cloudy day. So we'll just assume we've got enough solar cells that we can get enough power even if it's cloudy and in winter. So we need to estimate these two. OK, so let's think about the energy use of Canberra. So Canberra has 400,000 people, roughly. How much electricity do they use in a day? Now, there are different ways you could estimate this. Uh, you might happen to remember what your latest electricity bill was. I don't. Um, I'm going to try and estimate it by thinking how much power I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis. So, let's see, a lot of the time I'm using light bulbs. And I know how much power light bulbs use, because it says it on the packet when you buy them. The old incandescent ones are 60 or 80 or 100 watts, whereas the new ones are maybe 10 or 20 watts. So let's assume that most of the time there's a, a light going somewhere near me, so that might mean I'm using maybe 50 watts all the time. Sometimes there are going to be multiple lights. Now that gives me a sort of lower limit on the total power. I use a lot of electricity for a lot more than just light bulbs, but that's the sort of average power I'm going to use some fraction of the time. Sometimes during the day I'm going to use more, sometimes less, but maybe that's a good average. We've also got to factor in things like a refrigerator, um, air conditioning, uh, computer monitors, TVs, and so on. So it's clearly going to be quite a bit more than this, but I'd say probably not 100 times more. So we're probably talking total power consumption Uh, maybe an average of 10 times that, say, maybe 500 watts. I know that running a microwave oven, they're usually labelled as 800 or 1,000 watts, and running a, a stove would be a lot more power than that, so some things use a lot of power, some things less. We could estimate a shower, power usage in a shower, to heat up the water. How much water do we use in a shower? I don't know, maybe about 10 litres. Fill up a bucket, I guess it depends.
depends what sort of shower you've got. And we need to heat it up to you know, about 40 degrees, so that means we're going to heat it up by about 20 degrees over background temperature. So about 20 degrees. So the energy needed for that is equal to the mass, which is about 10 kilograms, times change in temperature, times the specific heat capacity, which is 4,200. So that's 4 by 10 to the 3. Uh, multiply by 2, make it about 8 by 10 to the 3, 8 by 10 to the 4, call that 10 to the 5, 10 to the 6, about 10 to the 6 joules for a shower. You only have one shower a day, so you need to divide by 24 times 3,600 for the number of seconds in a day to get an average power. Uh, so that's about 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, 10 to the 5, so it's about 10 watts on average over the day. So you've got a whole bunch of things that are you know, 10 to 100 watts um, adding all up, so I think probably about 500 watts for the average electricity consumption of a typical Australian. You've also got to factor in the electricity used in work, some people will have factories and so on. It actually turns out if you look it up, the average electricity consumption is slightly more than that, it's about 1,100 watts on average day and night for the typical Australian. But we'll use something like that. For ninja physics purposes, this is quite accurate enough. Okay, so that's how much power is being used at a given time. We need to convert it into the energy using it at night. So if we do that, so let's call it a thousand watts times, let's say, 10 hours over the night. So that's times 10 times 60 times 60 for the number of seconds. That's so that's about 10 to the 3, 10 to the 4, that's 10, 5, 6 times 36, so it's uh, another times 10 to the 3, times 36, so that's about 4 by 10 to the 7 joules for one person. There are 400,000 people in Canberra, that's uh, 4 by 10 to the 5, so that's 4 times 4, so it's 16 times 10 to the 7 plus 5, so that's about times 10 to the 12, so that's roughly 10 to the 13 joules to keep Canberra going overnight. So I've put some notes in just to explain what I'm doing. Right, so can a dam supply that much power? Hmm, well, there's the question. So if we take one cubic metre of water, so one cubic metre of water from the top to the bottom, the potential energy is going to be mgh. One cubic metre of water weighs 1,000 kilograms. This would be about 1,000 kilograms times g, which is about 10, times the height, which is about 500 metres. So that's about 10 to the 3, 4, 5, 6, 5 by 10 to the 6 joules for one cubic metre, if you're 100% efficient. And actually these things are not that far off 100% efficient, so that would do a good estimate. So if we compare it to the 10 to the 13 joules, 5 by 10 to the 13, we'll call that about 10 to the 7. It's the nearest order of magnitude. So that means we need 10 to the 6 meters cubed of water. So that's basically a cube 100 by 100 by 100 meters. which doesn't sound too bad. The dams are pretty good. In fact, it turns out that the Cotter Dam has about 10 to the 8 cubic metres volume. So that means you'd only need 1% of the volume here, if you're 100%, to get about the right amount of electricity. So this is actually looking quite feasible. Uh, you're not going to do it with a small water tank, but if you've got really got a 500 meter difference, um, 100 by 100 by 100 meters, uh, which is only 1% of a large dam, will do it very nicely. So this is feasible.